near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. This is Mr. Chris Claremont. A legend. Melanie goes, eat some Hey, hey, all you minties, Uncanny Omar here from Nearman Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the latest printing of The Avengers Omnibus Volume 4 from Marvel Comics. So, let's go ahead and get started. Now, before going any further, I do want to thank David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on September 19th. Or 20th, I guess, depending on where you get your books. What we're looking at here is the direct market cover. And this is the one that's drawn by the phenomenal and legendary Neil Adams. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover by the phenomenal... Arthur Adams and that one will be available everywhere whereas the direct market is only available at places like cheapgraphicnovels.com, waltzcomicshop.com, comicsbugle.com, dyingbreedcollectors.com, organicpricebooks.com, instocktrades.com, talesofwonder.com and of course your local comic book store and if you notice the spines are different but everything else about the book is the same. Now what I am going to do is compare the new printing to my original printing. They are still using this Arthur Adams, by the way, I love this cover, it's so freaking epic. Look at all those characters that Arthur Adams puts there. There's nothing wrong with Neil Adams, this is the classic cover. But this is the standard edition that they're still using for the new standard edition reprint. However, I'm sure you probably noticed, like all the other reprints, the spines are not gonna be this particular spine instead of this. So you have the Avengers, Thomas, Englehart, and Adams, S. Buscema and Brown down there. Whereas over here, you could see their whole names. Volume 4, and then you have this widescreen shot of the Avengers. In the back here, for the Avengers, it's All Out War. And Roy Thomas and Neil Adams' Kree Scroll War, and then Steve Englehart's Avengers Defenders Clash. So the retail price of this book, this one I think came out, if I'm not mistaken, in 2019. This one was $100, and this new printing is also $100. Tells you what it collects down here using a different font. And let's go back to this, because we're going to be looking underneath the dust jacket. But first, let's look at the flaps. There we go. Giving you a little synopsis as to what you're going to find in here. Then the bio and the creators over here. Uh, let's take it out. Very similar, just using different fonts and, of course, updating the bios on the creators like you have neil adams for example who sadly passed away last year um but let's take a look at this this is get the honestly this was getting closer to what they probably wanted uh using the avengers logo and there it is right there and then of course this looks like the spine as does this and then nothing on the back and then of course the a for avengers all right so we're going to crack this book open, talk a little... I think... Wait a minute. No, I did do an overview of this one years ago. Oh, young Omar. Uh, I'm sure I talked about my favorite... I always talk about one of my favorite panels in the Avengers, if not my favorite panel of all time in the Avengers, and I'll show it again here. I never go back and watch my old videos. Who knows what I said? Uh, but, you know, stick with me here. So I'm going to give you the pitches to the stories in here, show off the artwork, and then do a little bit of a comparison with the original printing. Okay, let's go ahead and get this opened. We have some black end sheets. The Avengers Omnibus Volume 4, what it collects, this amazing image from Barry Smith from issue 100, or I guess Barry Windsor Smith, as he is later known. This image from the aftermath of the Kree Scroll War, but I promise I will not talk about each and every single issue, just some of the highlights. Uh, over here are your credits, what it collects, the writers, Roy Thomas, and then him leaving the book. Steve Englehart, Harlan Ellison doing the plot for issue 101, Chris Claremont, Stan Lee, Steve Gerber. Then you have the pencilers like Sal Buscema, Neil Adams, Bob Brown, John Buscema, Barry Winter Smith. Uh, inkers like Sal Buscema, S Sam Granger, George Russo, uh, Tom Palmer, inkers over here. So there's a lot more inkers uh, than pencilers, Dan Atkins. Then the letters like Sam Rosen, 
My goodness, he was around for ages. Colorist over here. They're starting to give credit now to the colorist, if you've noticed. And then the editors, of course, at the time being Stan Lee. And then when Roy Thomas took editor, uh, he became editor-in-chief. All right, so here is your table of contents, what's collected in here. And you have three different introductions. One from Roy Thomas and then... No, actually, two from Roy Thomas and then two from Steve Englehart, who took over the book. And Roy Thomas's introductions are wonderful. They are a history lesson as to what was happening behind the scenes. Talking about the Cree Scroll War here. And I do love the fact that both him and Neil Adams always want to take claim as to who came up with the three cows shot me down. All right. What is collected in here? Well, Avengers 89 all the way to 119, Daredevil 99, Defenders 8 through 11. So we do have this classic Kree Scroll War. Um, Roy Thomas was writing Captain Marvel, and Captain Marvel really wasn't selling at the time, so he still wanted to write the character and bring him to a wider audience, which of course is found in the pages of the Avengers. Sal Buscema doing the artwork here early on. And this is during the time when Captain Marvel was connected with Rick Jones, and Rick Jones was sent to the negative zone, and vice versa whenever the bands are connected, so he can stay around for a little while. Letter pages intact. Uh, this is the Neanderthal issue. But the big thing that is going on, the big story arc that's happening, is of course there's this gigantic war between the Kree and the Skrull. And the Avengers are sort of caught in the middle. You know, they're they're being accused of helping aliens, and they pretty much lose the belief of the people, so much so that they send in mandroids to take care of them. And in steps in Neil Adams, because he always wanted to draw something with Roy Thomas again. And Roy Thomas is like, sure, we had fun on the X-Men books. Why don't we do Avengers? And little did he know that it would become this classic, yes, yes, right here, this classic story. Uh, this right here is my favorite panel of Avengers ever. As a kid, this is what I wanted to be as an artist. The angles and the details and the shadows i just thought this was so amazing i remember sitting on my bed 12 years old and just trying to figure out how to draw this magical scene um and it just blew me away i think this was originally supposed to be an ant-man story and then later it got transitioned into this particular story with the Kree scrolls uh the scrolls end up with captain marvel and it's these scrolls that have been around since the fantastic four issue number two and they tell you a little bit of their origin story. Um, but yeah, that's um, these stories that are found through these pages are some of the ones from my childhood. Not that I grew up and got them off the stand. But there's one particular issue in here. Issue 110, I remember specifically. I got that. And I'll talk, I guess I'll talk a little bit about that, why I got it. And it made me go back and get a bunch of Avengers because I've always heard about the Kree Scroll War, who hadn't at the time. And let me tell you, some of these were impossible to find. Um, you know, especially if you lived in a small town and your comic book store was about an hour away. And we didn't do any Melway stuff. So, yeah, Neil Adams only sticks around for about four issues, but he did some phenomenal stuff here. And then we ended up getting John Buscema to wrap up the story. Uh, we have the aftermath of where the hell was Hawkeye during the last part of that story. Uh, he does end up coming back. Here's issue 100, which has the artwork by Barry Winter Smith, who drew some of these issues here leading up to this. But he only sticks around for a few pages or a few issues. Sorry, just like two or three, I think. This is the one that's plotted by Harlan Ellison. Roy Thomas, of course, uh, doing the actual script of the book. And you have the return of the Grim Reaper here, along with a couple of other villains from this particular time. Roy Thomas's final story. Look at that. That's awesome. He always liked the Sentinels. And he didn't get much use in the pages of the X-Men. I mean, he wrote a really cool Sentinel story over there. But this being his final issue right here of the Avengers. And it's interesting to read the behind the scenes because he had no idea he was going to leave the book. Until, of course... Too much work became too much work that he was promoted, became editor-in-chief. Uh, and then uh, Steve Englehart took over the book. And I will say Steve Englehart's stories here towards the beginning really feel like he... Oh, this the Mutates, baby. These are the characters that appeared uh, in the pages of, what was it, X-Men 62? 
but it's like he was catering to Roy Thomas. He was writing Roy Thomas type of stories. And as a matter of fact, he admits it later on. This is a really interesting story right here that features Cap and Rick Jones as Bucky. Uh, the return of a classic Avengers villain. And I mean classic because he was long forgotten. Nobody else was using that character. Uh, but in the introduction by Steve Englehart, he talks about how it took him a while to just find his voice in Avengers. He didn't know, you know, exactly how much he wanted to please Roy Thomas as his boss, you know? And he was like, I was writing stories that Roy Thomas wanted to read. I wasn't writing stories that Steve Englehart wanted to read. And you can see the, the, the change in the tone, especially when a particular character shows up. But let's talk about... Issue 110. So issue 110, I remember seeing this at Dr. Comics, the local flea market. Well, not local, but he was in Shelbyville, Kentucky. Um, and he set up there, and he had this book. And he had this book for $5. And $5 back then, in the late 80s, was a lot of money for this kid. I was uh, 12 years old, but what I did that summer was start uh, cutting tobacco. And that was back when we had a lot of tobacco here in the state of Kentucky. Anyway, anyway, my point is I made some money, 12 years old. And I, man, I went comic book crazy. I went nuts, dude. I bought so many back issues that I always wanted, uh, things like this. And this got me interested in Avengers because it's, yes, you have the X-Men, you have Magneto who's claimed that he's killed the X-Men. I'm like, Wait, but the X-Men are still alive right now, and it's 19, when was it, 1989 or something like that. Uh, how could Magneto possibly kill them? Yes. That is called clickbait. And Magneto, yeah, captures the X-Men. Now Hawkeye's hanging out with Daredevil, and Daredevil kind of gets looped into this crossover. That's why it's collected in here. But that issue made me go and get the second issue, issue 111, where Magneto actually fights all of the Avengers, and then Hawkeye comes back to the team, and I'm like, okay, these guys are pretty cool. So I went back and got some back issues. Uh, he didn't have the next ones, which actually introduce a very important character. Uh, so yes, there's an introduction there by Steve Englehart, and he talks about how, like I mentioned, he was wanting the right stories for himself and the thing that he did was introduce this one particular character and i feel like with her introduction aha uh -huh, here she is when this young lady appears it's like he changes the tone of the avengers and makes it a little more mature he he thought that there wasn't i don't want to just say super sexy ladies but in his words he felt like the team needed a certain sex appeal to it uh and i'm so butchering the way that he worded it because he worded it a lot better than that uh to make people think that this is more of a mature title that it's not just for kids that long gone are those days of stan lee and jack kirby's avengers where it's just a team-up book uh that now we've entered a whole new era and it does feel like that right like you have a love triangle you have the relationship the uh, the big relationship between Swordsman and Mantis. Mantis was kind of a flirt with all the male Avengers and a little bit with uh, Wanda there, which oh, I wasn't complaining. Uh, but yeah, it did. It definitely changed the tone of the Avengers from the way that Roy Thomas did. And I dug it. Now we have the Avengers Defenders War. So you've got Silver Surfer versus not just Scarlet Witch, but also Vision. Uh, you've got Hawkeye versus Iron Man. You've got, oh, I think it's Doctor Strange versus Black Panther. And then, of course, the person that is pulling the strings. You know, there's not just one person, but there's a couple of people behind the scenes pulling all the strings. And uh, it is a classic story. Uh, I think the Kree-Scroll War is still regarded as the big event that kind of kicked off events for Marvel. The Avengers Defenders War, that was such a big, long story arc that... That's why they decided to do things later on, like Contest of Champions and then, of course, the um, Secret Wars. So it was like, you know, experimenting in the same way that the Justice League would cross over with the Justice Society of America. So they borrowed a little bit of that from DC Comics. Uh, you have the return of the Collector here. And really, the characters like Scarlet Witch and Vision... And Mantis and Swordsman take the big spotlight. Now, all the way in the back, we have the extra goodies, like the Avengers Annual Number 5 right there. 
and then foom the pencils right here these are photocopies uh, by neil adams my favorite comic book panel from the avengers right there so cool and of course the mistake is here i know people have talked about it and i may have talked about it uh, where the original picture had six fingers because neil adams was up late hours of the evening original art here from john ramita and then the Cree Scroll War. I believe this is issue number two. This is a retelling of the Cree Scroll War. They kicked it off with this particular issue. And what they did is kind of gave you a prologue as to what happened previously because they didn't collect everything from 89 to 92. So these seven pages that were written by Alan Selenitz and then drawn by Walter Simonson were kind of like your recap, letting you know what happened previously in those pages. The trade paperback. I think I had, this is the one that I had, the three cows shot me down. And Neil Adams in his introduction is busting on this cover. He's like, I don't even understand what's happening here. Whose perspective are we looking at Vision from? Anyway, a critic of his own art. Oh, man, he was amazing. Uh, Avengers Defenders War Trade Paperback. This is the 2002 cover by the also gone way too soon. Carlos Pacheco, John Romita, who we lost this year. My gosh, just just crazy. And then the Arthur Adams cover right here. Now, as far as the binding, the book has 856 pages and retails again for $100. It is sewn binding and it is printed at the iMac printer. So there's a little bit of bleed through. Actually, let's go ahead and compare it to the original printing from 2019. All right, we have the original printing from 2019 right here on the left and the new printing on the right hand side. Uh, the original printing was printed at the Leo paper, and that was the Leo paper in China. Now, you know, the, the original printing was, honestly, the paper stock feels just a little bit thinner than the paper stock they were using in the original printing. And both of them having a hard time staying open because of the uh, in sheets here. But you do have a little bit of bleed through here, a little more over here, because like I said, the paper stock seems to be just a little bit thinner. That image is a little bit smaller, hmm. but the font, let me see here. Oh, there's gaps here. Hmm, I wonder why they didn't break them up over here. Looks like they're using, actually, it's a little more faded out, the background, so you can read the long introduction by Roy Thomas. All right, so let's look here. Yeah, see, there's a little bit of bleed through from the original down there, and of course, in the new printing. Uh, the colors... Uh, actually, they look about the same. And let's just see over here. Uh, the, looking for lighter colors to kind of see if there's... Eh, it's minimal. Uh, here we go. <sighs> yeah, it's not really there. Honestly, it's just mainly through whites that you can see a little bit of the bleed through. More so over here. But like I said, I'm looking for these things. I don't know if people sit here and, and do that. But if you do, I guess more power to you. It's your money you spend, so you can do whatever you want to with your books. Um, here, let's do a comparison of the Neil Adams spread page. So I wanted to showcase the difference in the way the books lay over. I have opened this one up twice. Stretched the spine. This one, I remember... I think I stretched the spines maybe once and then read it once. So they've had about the same. And honestly, they're laying open quite similar. I mean, you're still missing the E right there because of the gutter loss as it is right there. So you still have to hold it down to see the whole thing. Maybe just a little bit more gutter loss over here than over here. Um, colors seem just a little bit more vibrant here in the Leo paper. You can still see a little bleed through here on the red as over here. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. I can't wait to talk about Volume 5. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. 
And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking this up, if you already have the original printing, uh, if you've read the stories in here, what you think about them, like the Kree Scroll War, or of course the Avengers Defenders War, or the introduction of Mantis, and what you think of this particular era of Avengers, and what other Avengers omnibus you want to see collected. Besides, we have the Volume 5 right around the corner. But that's it, everyone. Stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.